untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. Not gonna go with hideous laughter, but I applaud anyone willing to go for it. What else do we have? Some good uncommons, I guess mostly Moondancer stands out, haven't had great experiences with Death's Whisper yet. Don't think I've seen anyone draw a card of it so far. Uh, so Moondancer is an option, and then there's some good commons with Paladin and Spoils of the Hunt, if we want to stay a little bit more flexible. But um, I don't really hate committing to Moondancer early on, because the problem with the life gain deck is if you don't get to good on commons, it doesn't really, you know, work itself out. Now, the sad part about taking Moondancer is that we're passing a Paladin, which maybe sends the wrong signal. Although Paladin is also very good in the equipment deck. So Paladin might be the more flexible early pick. But I'm just going to go with the Moondancer in the hopes of getting a nice synergistic life gain deck going. But again, Paladin or Spoils would be perfect picks as well. It's going to be hard to pass up a Loyal Warhound, just a good card. There's also the Priest, which is also a very good card. So it's between those two. There's even a Paladin, so man white. It's just wide open here, all cards we want. Hmm. What are we thinking? Warhound versus Priest. The Warhound doesn't always draw a card. It is a two drop. Although green white usually doesn't struggle with two drops. I think I'm leaning Warhound. But uh, of course, hoping that the Paladin or Priest wheels, even though that's unlikely. It's close. I'll, I'll just take the cheaper card. I have this saying, when in doubt, take the cheaper card. Because cheaper cards, if you're, you know, stuck on lands, you can at least cast a little bit uh, more easily. So that's usually the tiebreaker for me. And a Lurking Roper is perfect here. So we might be getting there on the life gain deck. Ooh, another Paladin, perfect. The Cleric's also not bad in this deck, but Paladin has to be the pick. And a big fan of Pegasus, there's also Owlbear. Probably can't pass an Owlbear. Although Pegasus is a great combo with a Statfast Paladin as well, to get a lifelink hidden, maybe trigger cards like Roper and Moondancer. Oh, can I have my Pegasus now, or there's another Paladin. I think it's Paladin once again, but man, I would love to get a Pegasus too. Paladin's just the best to drop for the life gain deck at common. So we're definitely in the right color, at least white seems wide open. Potion of Healing also a totally fine card in this deck. Take a Bull Strength. Also kind of cute with Lurking Roper, getting to untap it without gaining life. And I'll take a Mace, don't know if I'll play it though. So we didn't wheel anything out of this pack, but that wasn't too surprising. Small chance we get a, a Paladin or a Priest in the next one. Yeah, I'll take a Champion. So, you know. People did pick up those good white cards. Just gotta try and fight them for it and hopefully they give up and we get to go for the life gain deck here. If we get a Pegasus on the wheel that would be awesome too. Nothing that matters here. Uncommon for the vaults. Probably not gonna play Ambushed on the Road. Alright, so I didn't get all the cards I wanted. Of course someone else picked up those good white cards. But still a decent start for life gain deck. Hopefully we can continue this trend. Relatively a late owl bear, so might be getting some more green cards. And yep, yeah, cleric class is pretty much perfect for this deck. Just gonna maximize picking up life gain synergies, but uh, cleric class can 
kind of win a game single-handedly sometimes. Moonblast Cleric would also be a nice pickup later once we already have Cleric class as a way to find it. And Inspiring Bard would be a fine creature to wheel. Alright, is it now time for Pegasus? I think so. Seems better than Evolving Wilds and Green Dragons, kind of whatever. Okay, so far so good. So just looking for more creatures that gain life, or cards in general that gain life, Potion of Healing, a card we don't mind picking up pretty late in the pack. And then of course the Priest at 3 mana, and maybe Unicorn to start putting counters on it. Alright, what's next? Probably something on watch. Hate passing cards like Power Word Kill, but... Don't think we're switching to black at this point. And the flexibility of a pump spell and a removal spell is pretty decent, especially with our lifelinking paladins at 2 mana. Alright, things are drying up a little bit, although this pack in general is kind of weak. Go with choose your weapon, but hopefully we don't have to play it. Might have just been a weak pack. Alright, there we go, another paladin. Triple Paladin also makes equipment better, so maybe more interested in playing the Mace. Would have taken Evolving Wilds if we didn't have a Paladin in that pack. Lifelink just mitigates the opportunity cost of spending mana to equip a Mace, so you can actually win a racing situation as opposed to the opponent just playing more creatures and turning them sideways. Alright. Outlander's fine. It can technically gain life with pack tactics if we go for the Mad Mage's dungeon. It just has good stats. I also don't mind Ranger if we're looking for a more expensive card. Given how many 2-drops I have, I think I'm kind of liking the Ranger more. Also gives us a Reach creature, which is always helpful. Yeah, usually... You don't end up with this many 2-drops, so it's kind of a luxury that we can take the 5-drop over the 2-drop there. Not a huge fan of the troll, but we might play it. And then probably go with the monk, since we're lined to removal so far. Alright, bard is fine. So, yeah. Second pack was decent, not amazing. Picked up a Cleric class, an author Paladin, Pegasus. But not much more than that. So yeah, hopefully we get some more good uncommons in the last one. Maybe we'll play the Pit Tramp, but I hope we can avoid it. Alrighty, last pack. Don't mind Shepherd. There's also Purple Worm. Purple Worm's okay. Can view it as a 5-drop. Not really lacking in the 5-drop department. I think Shepherd's gonna be better for the curve. And it's awesome if we can get it going with something like Cleric Class. Right, there's a Spoils, which I'm not going to pass up. Basilisk would also be fine with Spoils, especially. Cleric, we might wheel and play. Okay, Plate Armor looks good. Especially with triple Statfast Paladin. Another Roper. Man, there's also Herd Gorger, which I would love to take, but I think Roper is going to be good for us. I think we have enough ways to gain life to keep on tapping it, and it just beats down so hard. It's also just a good blocker if you need to hit the brakes and play defense. Another something on watch could also go with a rally maneuver as a powerful combo trick. It's kind of expensive, but could be okay in our deck. 
can also give lifelink. Okay. So it's cleric versus hunter. It's also evolving wilds, which is also a consideration. Hunter's like good but not amazing in our deck. Maybe it is evolving wilds. I feel like I'm not gonna struggle to get enough playables, so I'm probably better off just upgrading my mana base. And I'm pretty likely to wield another cleric in a future pack. Nothing here that I'm interested in. Alright, take a Pegasus to give our life linkers flying. Inspiring Bard would also be fine. And a Basilisk can help us against large creatures, maybe. Already have a Dwarf Hall Champion, only have one or two equipment that we're planning to play, so... Seems fine. Yeah, didn't get a ton of life gain payoff, sadly. Double Roper, Moon Dancer, Cleric Class. That's about it. And yeah, it looks like someone picked up that uh, Cleric at two mana as well. So I think there was probably someone else drafting a life gain deck. We didn't see a single unicorn either, which is kind of unusual. So we were probably fighting someone else over the life gain cards. But I think we still have a playable deck. Maybe we cut the mace. Between double pegasus, bards, and then these combo tricks like bull strength and rally maneuver, we have a few ways to get the Paladins through for damage, so the mace might just be too slow. I do like the plate armor, because while slow, at least it's like very impactful if the game does stall out. So... Yeah, I think cutting mace is fine. And then... Yeah, we could cut champion. It's not a bad card. Could also cut the troll, which is kind of slow. Not the biggest fan of that card. And then one more cuts. Yeah, I think I want to keep the combo tricks and the plate armor. Maybe choose your weapon. Maybe Dwarf Old Champion, I think, is between those two. Potion should be fine as a cantrip that works with Moondancer, Clara Class, and Roper. Pretty low opportunity costs. So it's between these two. 17 lands seems fine. Mana distribution pretty evenly splits with an Evolving Wilds. Alright, looks like it's going to be Choose Your Weapon. Alright, I think this is it. Green-Whites. Pick our sleeve. And, uh... How do we want to call this one, chat? A life lurker? That works. Alright, how do we feel about this hand? I'm not particularly great. No two-mana creature. So we're playing Cleric Class, doing nothing. Doing some more nothing. And then maybe playing a half-elf monk. I mean, if we draw two drop, this hand's actually good. If we don't, it's pretty bad. We are on the draw, so we do get a few draw steps towards one of our two drops. And it is true that Cleric Class is one of our better cards. Yeah, I mean, this is close. I think I'll try it. On the play, I think I would mulligan. Uh-oh. Oof, right on time. Hopefully the Paladin can hold fast. Okay, okay. I mean, it's pretty much what we said. If we find a 2-drop, the sand is good. Boy, 
Pawn on black white. I'm gonna Grim Bounty the Paladin, fair enough. They get an extra treasure. Next turn, probably go for the Monk. Using the treasure to play Dagger doesn't make a ton of sense. See if they have a pump spell. Hopefully they don't. Fangblade. Alright. We are starting to slowly stabilize. Now if I play Moon Dancer and just keep up 3 mana, that's going to be a little bit suspicious. Although I guess I could be using the Monk to tap down Fangblade, but then I'm not keeping up Rally Maneuver. So I can't really keep up Maneuver until I'm mostly empty-handed, probably. So kind of a tricky spot. Could just play Pegasus, hit with a Monk, and then trade Pegasus for Fangblade. Although, I guess they can put the Spare Dagger on the Fangblade and then kill anything we have. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good combo. I mean, if they use that combo to kill Pegasus, that's fine by me, so it's probably fine here. Like, I'm even fine trading Spare Dagger and Fang Blade for both of my creatures. But they might just kill Pegasus and then start venturing. Next turn I can start tapping the Fang Blade too, so... They might kill the monk, we'll see. Tanks with all. And takes out Pegasus. Okay. At this point the treasure probably doesn't matter. And then next turn... It's maybe time for Moon Dancer. Keep a maneuver. Second Fang Blade's annoying. Yeah, Fang Blade kind of makes her plate armor not that relevant anymore. Yeah, I wish this was kind of swapped around and gave. Two Toughness and First Strike, and then two Power and Life Link instead. Think I got a pass, and then just hope to put this maneuver to good use. Alright. Hey, I think I'm just trading for both Fang Blades. And then I can give this plus two power first strike so the monk still survives. So target a creature. I'm guessing this is the first strike one. Still get this cry, don't need land. Albert's good. Alright, so we're slowly starting to stabilize. Seven mana, so I can level up, keep up spoils. I don't know if that's better than just equipping plate armor on the monk. I 
All right, bring back Moon Dancer. Could also go for Paladin since we have this plate armor. But Moon Dancer seems more powerful if we can keep it going with more life gain later. And then put counter on maybe the monk or the owlbear. Paladin should be fine. And then I think I'm just going to wait and then end of turn tap something down with the monk and then we can start attacking. Uh -huh, it's going to make me sack an enchantment, most likely. Eh, we got our value from the cleric class, so it doesn't feel too bad. Right, and then now, tap down Beholder. And then... Can probably afford to attack with the monk. Have a lot of tricks we can use if they block. Potent takes it. Could consider moving the plate armor so we can tap with the monk, although it's not like the beholder has a good attack. Interesting. It's a semantic order baiting. Let's find out. Yeah, it's probably a manticore, but we get to trigger moon dancers, so that's fine. And they just wanted to trigger the ogre, fair enough. Seemed like a fine exchange. Could kill the ogre too. Yeah, I'm thinking probably kill the Beholder and tap the Ogre. Now I'm kind of liking kill the Ogre, tap the Beholder. How many lands did I scry to the bottom? Two. So I probably don't even want to fetch with the Wilds. So what am I doing here? I can attack, can move the plate armor, maybe to the paladin. If I move it here, it says five power. And then I can attack with the monk, tap down one of their creatures before blocks. And if I attack with all, and then before blockers use the monk to tap down spawn, they only have three powers, so they don't have any good blocks. That seems good. And then we still have something on watch as backup to kill the Beholder, maybe. So if we use this as a pump spell, we have 8, 13, would be lethal. Yeah, I think we go for it. All right, sweet. I was prepared to play a longer game, but I guess we might as well end it here. All right, the sand could be very powerful. Smith, all right, it's equipment. Smith misses, not too surprising. Gotta be playing a lot of artifacts for that card to consistently hit. And boots, okay, the full Grixis. 
or uh, Mardu, I should say. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind trading Paladin for Smith at this point. Play Roper. Shepard can start untapping it. Not her boots. That Smith is very hasty. Do they have a follow-up? They might have deal 5 to the Paladin or the Roper. Let's find out. Nope. Well, I mean, this seems like a race we can win. It's possible that playing Shepard is the play, but... What's their opponent gonna do about two four fives? Bruinor? Okay, that's a good one, and they can give it haste. But Roper still trades. Alright, so... Taking 14. Gonna hit him for 10 on the way back. It's almost worth it to just take it here, but... For single reds, there's nothing too bad that can happen, no. Yeah, maybe I just trade for Brunor. It's probably fine. I mean, we have a Cleric class we can still leverage, so it's fine to play a slightly longer game. Roper essentially having Vigilance here. And drops the Ranger. That's fine. So if I were to attack with a team, they're forced to block the Roper. Play Shepard, that seems okay. Roper's gonna untap in death. And then we can level up before attacking. Alright, sweet. Alright, fine hands. Trade the uh, Basilisk with a Statfast Paladin and it's even better, but... Can draw it every time. All right, the blue reds dice rolling deck. So, Rally Maneuver, potentially a way to untap the Roper. So they would probably block Basilisk here. Which I could give first strike. Might be worth it. Or I can just Pegasus, fly the Basilisk, hit for two. And then next turn go for the Rally Maneuver which could be more effective. I'm not too worried about the monk, I'm more worried about applying pressure and untapping my roper. I'm probably gonna level up Cleric class before I'm gonna do too much with the Monk. Alright, Scion is a pretty good counter to Lurking Roper. Opponent times down Pegasus instead. 
That's a little surprising, I guess, but they probably thought we couldn't tap the Roper, which, yeah, now we have a few ways of doing so. So, can attack with a team. So, plus two plus so first strike, uh, lifelink. Could also swap it, I guess, but we want to gain the, the most life. Or we could go for more damage. Maybe more damage is more relevant here. Yeah, I guess so. So, this gets first strike, this gets two toughness on lifelink. And now Paladin can help us untap the Roper once again. Alright, Swarming Goblins is pretty effective at stopping the Roper, especially when rolling a 20. Swarming Goblins attacks. Good double block. Puts a creature in the graveyard to get back with Cleric class as well. Yeah, sure. Alright, back up Roper. So now we have to make some decisions. Could level up Cleric class and attack with a Paladin. Opponent trades for Barbarian. We put a counter on Pegasus and hope it doesn't die. And then next turn I can trigger it again, which will get us more life. It's not a bad exchange, I suppose. If they kill the Pegasus, that's a little annoying, but we'll see. Right, trickster to make more flying blockers, potentially. Yeah, if they can keep the dice rolling going here, we could be in trouble. So next turn, Cleric class can maybe get back a Roper or a Steadfast Paladin. Power of Persuasion, Pegasus back on top. Opponent's gonna get a token here. I think I'm still happy drawing the Pegasus. Opponent's at 5. They've got some powerful cards in hand. Uh, yeah, more dice rolling cards. Probably give up a land. But that's a hasty elemental. Yeah, we're probably dead here. But much like the life gain deck, it kind of takes some powerful uncommons for the deck to function. Alright, so hopefully they don't gain Menace, and then we can uh, use a Basilisk to block the Elemental. Don't have land 5 to level up again. So, I guess Pegasus attacks, and then I have to decide what to play next. Probably go for the Monk. 
can maybe tap down a flyer or two to help us get in the last points. Bird could easily be dead here. Valor Singer is fine. One card in hand. And you come to River to make Elemental unblockable, and now we're dead. Well, that was unexpected. GG's. Yeah, they were probably looking at bouncing a creature, and then they figured out that there's a second line of text on that card. No green just yet, but a turn to Paladin. Hopefully turn for Pegasus, yeah. I'll try it. Can probably play that next turn. And then skipping out on Basilisk is not the end of the world. I'm not gonna trade for a Hexblade. So they've got another creature they can play, no? Maybe just a Dragon's Fire? Huh, I'm kind of liking... Attack, see what happens, and then maybe choose your weapon if they Dragon's Fire. Alright, that's kind of a weird attack with a Hexblade then. Just Basils can pass. Next turn, Albear. Take it from there. Put stuck on three. All right, we should have a good attack here. Should probably just smash and find out what happens. I can even rally maneuver plus choose your weapon if we do both on the owlbear that's 12 damage by itself. It's a lot of damage. But I can't imagine a blocking situation where rally maneuver isn't a blowout and yeah it's gonna be a blowout. So how about this gets first strike because I care more about dealing damage than gaining a life. So that makes sense. And then do I want to choose your weapon? It is tempting. And then Pegasus can maybe help us close out the game. I guess we'll uh, wait on the Pegasus. Power Word kill, alright. Opponent's still in the game. Two mana left. Plate armor is decent. I mean, they're taking a lethal on board, so I think I prefer plate armor equip like a basilisk here. And attack, make them use removal if they have it. On the creature we care about the least. Now 
Not sure what they can even have here. Another powered kill. Dragon's Fire doesn't save them. Alright, another power word kill it is. Points at one. Vampire spawn back up to three. And a hoarding ogre. Alright, it's finally time for Pegasus to come out and play. Alright, decent hands. Another red black. Yeah, probably don't need to play Pegasus yet when we can just equip. And then if they kill it, sure, we can just repopulate with Ranger. They can't Manticore because of the Ward 1. This has to be something else. Opponent just does nothing. Maybe they had a Manticore, but they just forgot about Ward. And now Pegasus can maybe get us across the finish line. I could wait to put plate armor on Ranger and then fly the Ranger for 8 points of damage. I don't hate that plan. And then for now... I mean, attacking with Paladin, also not a great attack necessarily, but... Gets rid of Dungeoneer, gains 5. And then I can play Paladin, equip Ranger. If they kill Ranger, that's a bit of a bummer. Yeah, let's go for it. Maybe they have a Feign Death. Yep. Sure. This might have been a, a line that's a little too greedy, just trying to go for the one-hit KO. Yeah, it's not quite gonna work out now that they gain two. Aggressive attack. I mean, they'll still have a Pegasus they need to deal with. And then a trampling owlbear. So game four up to six. They're not quite dead on the way back, unfortunately. Can deal five next turn. But I think we're still in good shape. So probably just hit them for two, play Owlbear.
And now they'll have to trump attack with Paladin to go to 6 to survive. Yeah, our opponent seems pretty dead. Yeah, Paladin plus Plate Armor did a lot of work that game. And is this a good hand? And it's a little awkward with all three of our combo tricks. No early creatures besides Shepherd at three, but we're on the draw, can fetch a forest. Yeah, I'll try it. Ooh, Warhound makes the sand a lot better. So if they play two drop, we can hear something on watch on turn two, maybe. All right, they don't. So my turn two is going to go to waste a little bit. Never mind. And then, uh, yeah. Warhound, get a planes, get the ball rolling. Zorn. All right, haven't seen much of Zorn in action before. But pretty good in black red, I imagine. Probably just gonna chill. Don't hate, attack with both. And then if they take it, Shepard, keep up something on watch. And Rally Maneuver could be pretty strong here. Yeah, it's probably worth it. So first strike, lifelink. Don't get to deploy any extra creatures, but Fang Blade's kind of annoying. Spawn, sure. Keep the Basilisk on defense, although attacking is also reasonable. At 5 mana we could see the Steel and Sack combo. Yeah, Windfall pretty nice with Zorn. Axe Blades. Draws a card. Roper's not bad. A bit stuck on green mana. Which would have been a reason last turn to maybe play Shepard instead. Yeah, probably just uh, play the Roper. Don't really want to trade Warhound. This might be another game where we go uh, choose your weapon and bull strength on a large creature to get in lethal. Could save it with something on watch. Is that better than uh, keeping it as 5 damage? Yeah, I kind of want to just empty my hand a little bit. Yeah, just gotta wait for more green mana to combo with a lurking roper to set up that one hit KO. So for now it's just Shepard. Could also Bard pump the Pegasus. Like I'm not gonna have triple green anytime soon to go Bard, Strength and choose your weapon in the same turn. So maybe Bard pump Pegasus is better here. Don't really need a life gain from Shepard since Roper's not attacking into the Fang Blade. 
and the lower we get them, the more likely bull strength plus choose your weapon is lethal. That's aggressive. So what this, could this represent? Is this like a second main meteor swarm to clear the board? Is it a pair of goblins? I mean, we can play around a pair of goblins quite easily. Could be an Orcus to wipe the board. Yeah. And Orcus here would basically kill all creatures. So let's say... Block something like this. And then a pair of goblins here is still not the end of the world. I guess there's a better block. Like so. I could not block with the lurking roper. In the hopes that they don't play it for five. That's also reasonable. So we'll see what Orcas does here. Yep. So they are probably gonna wipe the board. Does cost them five life as well. And we get to add more stuff to the board. So next turn we might still get there with the bull strength and choose your weapon. Do need a second green for that. Wow. <laughs> They also have Meteor Swarm, both of the sweepers essentially. I mean, what can I say? Play Roper and hope uh, that doesn't die. There's a reason our opponent's at six wins, presumably. Okay, so we could go for lethal. Cards that punish me for playing a pump spell include Power Word Kill. I guess a six mana Beholder card that no one plays and Fireball. So there are a few ways that uh, I wouldn't have lethal here. I can play Ranger, I can play Choose Your Weapon Killing Orcus as well. So we have a lot of options. Against, let's say, a, a Price of Loyalty, what's safest? Probably just Killing Orcus. I think I still attack with a Roper. My opponent has something. And then I probably choose a weapon in their turn. And that works. And bull strength on Roper is still potentially lethal. Elemental. I guess that one kind of saves them here. Does force a chum block. So it's kind of an interesting spot. If I sack a land, I wouldn't be able to play Ranger. And if I just play Ranger, I most likely kill them. Although the safest play is probably sack a land, bull strength roper, force them to chump. And then if I draw land for Ranger, we can probably win the game from there. So most likely going for the pump spell 
last turn would have won the game, but when our opponent attacks with Orcus, with two cards in hand, can't feel too safe. Alright, well, beating Red Black with Orcus and Meteor Swarm is quite the accomplishment. So our pile of green, white, and commons got there. Not bad, not bad. Alright, well, 2 7 wins today, so it feels like I'm starting to get a better sense of what this format is all about. Demolich. Maybe fun for constructed, although not even sure if it's good in standard, probably more of a historic card. For limited, probably go for Owlbear. Mordekainen, very powerful as well. Definitely first pickable, even though blue might be one of the weaker colors. We've proven that if you get good enough rares, it doesn't matter. Rogue class, I will probably skip. Haven't been super impressed by containment. Could make a case for a Celestial Unicorn. Maybe Barbarian class, try the dice rolling deck, although still unsure if that's really worth going for early. The jelly's great, definitely first pickable, but a very stacked pack with Roper, Spoils, Paladin, even Gretchen has an honorable mention at this point. Is it going to be better than Dragon's Fire? Unlikely, but let's see. Yeah, Ferris is close. I think they're about the same power level. Color preference-wise, red is maybe slightly better than green overall, especially red-black. But uh, of course, you don't often get the chance to play with sweet rares like Ferris. Oswald's kind of whatever. Targnar is quite powerful if you end up in red-green. And then Charm Sleep's fine, but blue's kind of unexciting. And then I guess there's a unicorn here as well. Yeah, not sure what I would take here. Probably between Targnar and unicorn. All right, sweet. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.